Hey guys, it's Dean, welcome to Manful Yoga. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can avoid cramping in your leg during bridge pose. So this typically happens when you're doing a bridge with one leg up, but in this video, I'm gonna show you the proper technique to make sure that you've got the technique and it's not technique related. And then I'm also gonna talk about some potential causes as well as some more common causes. So we can hopefully rule out the less common causes um, and then go straight to the main cause which are much easier to address. So watch this video from start to finish and uh, learn some stuff. Here we go. So we're gonna start off with proper technique for the bridge. And uh, just so we know what we're, the exercise we're dealing with here. So a bridge, you're gonna have your feet lined up under your knees, back is flat on the ground. Your feet should, straight, should, should face straight forward, but if you turn your toes out a little bit, that's okay too. From here, press down through your feet. You wanna squeeze your butt, squeeze your core, and then lift your hips away from the floor. Make sure that your back is flat here and your core is engaged. Don't arch your back up like this. That's a really common error. So keeping the back flat, squeezing your glutes, using your hamstrings, using your glutes to hold yourself up. And then from here, extending your right leg out, coming into single leg bridge. And this is usually where that cramping happens. Most people don't have it in uh, with both legs down, but when that one leg comes out and all the weight shifts to that left hip or to that other hip, that's when we feel that cramping. And it will be very immediate, it will cause you to stop. And uh, now we're gonna talk about some common causes of that. So first off, let's eliminate the less common causes. So there are three that I'll discuss here. Uh, the first one is overexertion. Um, and if you have been doing a lot of exercise recently, um, if you're just really sore, then you might be overexerting the muscle. Um, if if the muscle is sore, if the muscle is too tired, cramping is a common response. Um, it just means that the muscle is fatigued. Um, if you aren't working out regularly though, if this is, if you're just getting back into a workout program or if you're only working out for, you know, once per day for 30 or 45 minutes and you don't think you're really pushing yourself that much, then overexertion is probably not an issue here. The second potential cause is neuro-related, so neuromuscular, um, and that would have to do with some sort of tingling sensation. Uh, if you are having that, I'm gonna recommend that you see a physical therapist. Um, Nerve-related issues are differ from case to case, um, and I, without actually seeing you, I can't tell you what exactly is going on there, but most likely you're not having nerve issues in that. You might be, but you're probably not. Um, the third potential cause here might be technique related. Maybe you're using your back too much. Um, we're gonna look toward your spine if you're having cramping in your hamstrings. It could mean that you're just not using your core enough to support yourself. And uh, if that's the case, then you're gonna wanna make sure that as you're lifting yourself up into bridge that you're really keeping your abs tight just like you would during a plank. You can kind of see that my abs are flexed here and I'm keeping these really engaged. If I'm just relaxed and my back is kind of sinking down or I feel my lower back getting kind of tight or uncomfortable um, and I'm only using my butt, then that's going to cause an imbalance that could um, lead to that cramping in the hamstring just because it's overexerting itself. Um, but the two primary causes and what we're gonna focus on here, Number one, tightness, uh, a muscle tightness. So if you ask a muscle to do something, to do more work, um, and it's already in a shortened position and it's already tightened, and you're asking it to contract more, then a common response to that is cramping. So if you have muscle, um, if you have tight hips and you're trying to do a bridge or tight hamstrings, then a common response might be that cramping sensation. So um, before you do bridge, you're gonna wanna make sure that your hamstrings are loose um, with the appropriate hamstring stretching exercises. I would make sure that you're doing something um, active for this. So a lot of people do forward folds and reach down and touch their, touch their toes to stretch their hamstrings. I would avoid that. I would actually do something much more active. So I would recommend doing um, an active airplane here. Um, so you can stand on one foot, put your hands on a block, or even put your hands on a chair. You can, if you have something higher than that, then this also works. But the goal here is we wanna keep our back flat 
while stretching your hamstrings and continuing to actively stretch the hamstrings. So I'm squeezing my thigh, I'm using this leg, I'm not being passive. And this is just gonna help open up that muscle, but also still keep it engaged because we don't want that muscle relaxed during bridge. And then the second major cause, and this is most likely this is what's happening, it's just weakness. So maybe you're out of shape, uh, maybe you're not as young as you used to be, Whatever the case is, uh, if you haven't been doing this exercise for a long time now, if you haven't been working out consistently, if you have poor glute engagement or poor uh, or just a weak posterior chain, so the, the back side of your body isn't as strong as it should be, then you might have cramping in that position. Um, and that's pretty normal. Most of us have weakness in that area. And to help with that, I'm gonna show you two ways or two exercises that you can do uh, to work on that. So the first thing we're gonna do is get back into that bridge position and with your knees over your feet, core nice and engaged, we're gonna go straight up into bridge with both feet planted. Now this is kind of just the transition, right? Because most people don't have cramping in their, in their hamstrings during bridge with both feet down, it's when we shift the all the way to one foot. So what we're going to do, instead of shifting all that weight immediately, you're going to slowly shift that weight. So maybe you lift your right heel off the ground, maybe you lift the toes off the ground, maybe you just lightly lift some of that foot off the ground and slowly shift some of that weight to the left side, right? So we're not putting all the weight over there immediately, we're just slowly, um, Re, uh, rebalancing that. And then over time, maybe we can get to the point where we come up and just have one toe down. Maybe we get to the point where we can lift that foot off the ground temporarily. But the point is, I'm not going straight up into one leg off the ground. I'm kind of cheating here, keeping one foot down, slowly shifting that weight to the left foot, and then over time, getting to the point where I can extend that other leg away from the ground entirely. But as you're doing that, you wanna make sure that you continue to keep your core engaged. Um, you're evenly pressing down through the whole foot, uh, not just pressing down through the heel. And one other thing that helps there is actually thinking about pulling your body forward with your foot. So that's gonna help with increasing hamstring engagement. If you can think pulling your body forward with your foot, pulling your shoulders toward your foot, and that will help with hamstring engagement as well. So. That's one thing you can do. Another thing that you can do is using a block, you can add a little bit of support and put some of your body weight into the block. That way your hips don't have to do as much work. So this is another bridge variation, but you're gonna get into your bridge, put a block directly under, or kind of uh, directly under your sacrum, right above your waist. And we can rest there. I want you to do your best to make sure that your spine is neutral here, so don't let your back arch. We're gonna squeeze your butt as much as you can, push down through your feet, and then maybe lift one leg away from the ground. But because we have that block underneath us, we don't have to do as much work because the block is holding us up a little bit more. So you can try using a block. Notice how I can actually move my foot around here, right? My, my weight is pretty well supported by a cork block. Um, don't get a foam block, get, make sure you get a cork block, they're much better. Um, and then we can work on building strength here with the support of the block. Over time, maybe we can get to the point where we can lift away from the block entirely, um, but that block is gonna add a bit of support as you build strength so that you don't feel that cramping. And then the last thing that I'm going to show you is a different variation of bridge that might help with better glute engagement. So if you can get your back higher off the ground, you'll actually get your back into um, or you can lift your shoulders higher than your hips, it's gonna help get you into a position where you're not going to rely on your back as much. A lot of people tend to overuse their lower back and their erector spinae, those muscles on either side of the spine. So if we can get um, your back higher up to start, then that might help you get better glute engagement. So ideally you're doing this with a bench. I don't have a bench here, I have a chair, so that's what I'm going to use. You can also use a couch. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna get my back or my shoulders or whatever I can onto that chair. Get my feet like I would have them for the bridge. 
and then from here, I'm gonna do all those things that I did with my feet and my hips before, but my back is just higher up. So squeeze your butt, drive up, keep your back flat, make sure that you're not arching your back, and you can kind of tell in this position it's easier to avoid arching your back. I can get better glute engagement, I can get more of a, a neutral, or even um, a little bit of rounding through my spine. And then from here, maybe I can lift one leg up, make sure I'm getting that glute engagement, and you can practice here as well. And we can even apply that same exercise we did at the beginning, right? Slowly shifting the weight, maybe coming up onto the toes on one foot, and then over time, getting to the point where we can lift that foot off the ground entirely. So, if you are experiencing cramping in your hamstrings or your glutes during a bridge, that's one way, uh, or that's a lot of ways that you can fix it. Again, there are a few causes that might be causing it, but most likely it's related to either tightness or weakness. So working on your mobility and then working on your strength, uh, practicing this exercise repetitively until your body builds the strength to be able to do it. All right guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. That way you find out as soon as new videos are released. Hit the like button if you found the video useful. And if you have questions or suggestions for future uh, topics, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. All right, if you enjoyed that video, I wanna invite you to take my free seven day challenge. This is a beginner's yoga for men workout series featuring 15 minute workouts and daily emails to help hold you accountable and motivated. This is a great way to learn yoga, to get started, and it's totally free. Sign up at the first link in the description below. When you sign up, I'm also gonna give you a free bonus video, a previously members only workout called Head and Neck Essentials. This is a 25 minute workout that's perfect for relieving tension in your head, neck, and shoulders. Useful for pretty much any situation. So go ahead and sign up for that seven day challenge. Do it right now. Click that link in the description. I'll wait. And if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe. We put out new videos every week. And if you like the video, be sure to like the video, click the like button and leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you in the next video.